In this episode, Sony PS3 jailbroken, Linux kernel security vulnerability, and Ubuntu multi-touch. Quicksurf Internet Media presents Linux News Log, separating the Linux and open source signal from the noise. Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm your host Adrian, coming to you almost live from lovely Phoenix, Arizona, here in Studio C1 at Quicksurf Internet Media. Linux News Log is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do head on over to techpodcast.com and check out all the other technology-related shows over there. Let's go ahead and get into the stories for Season 11, Episode 4. From internetnews.com, there's a story here, Linux distros wrestle with security vulnerability. Um, a security vulnerability has been hidden within the Linux kernel for close to seven years. And even though Linux kernel developers and the open source OS's major distros have known about the flaw since at least June, several distros still remain vulnerable, potentially putting their users at risk considering the severity of the vulnerability, according to researchers. So... Basically, what this boils down to is there's been a bug in the kernel. It's been there forever. Not everybody's fixed it yet. Uh, you can get all the details uh, at, at reading the story. Um, you know, basically, make sure you, the distribution that you're using, if you actually do use Linux, make sure the distribution that you're using is patched and you'll be okay. Otherwise, just be a little on the careful side. Let's talk about our sponsor for this episode, GoToAssist Express. There are a variety of tools that let you remotely support a client, colleague, or friend, but the only one I trust and rely on is GoToAssist Express, the best remote support tool designed for small to medium-sized businesses, and it's brought to you by Citrix. Why GoToAssist Express? Well, it has exceptional performance, it's very easy to use, and it's secure. IT professionals, really anybody who doesn't have time to squander with a tool that's slow or unreliable will appreciate GoToAssist Express. With GoToAssist Express, you have no IT maintenance or updating. It's so fast you'll be on the other computer troubleshooting or giving a tutorial in seconds, and it's consistently reliable. My listeners can try GoToAssist Express free for 30 days. For this special offer, visit gotoassist.com slash techpodcast. I repeat, my audience can try GoToAssist Express free for 30 days. For this special offer, visit gotoassist.com slash techpodcast. Please give it a try. This is how I uh, pay my bills and keep the lights on and keep the show going. So uh, support uh, your show by uh, supporting uh, my sponsors, and we'll be able to keep doing this for a very long time. It's It's super easy. And uh, it's, it's at least worth a try, especially if you spend any amount of time helping anybody else with computer problems. From Yahoo News, PlayStation 3 security foiled by a jailbreak USB stick? Oh, yeah. We're getting back into the jiggies. Sony's PlayStation 3 was long popular with the homebrew and tech-savvy gamer crowd in part because Sony initially supported running Linux on the console, and they've removed that as we previously reported. However, Sony removed that capability in a firmware update early, earlier this year, allegedly to staunch game and content piracy. Come on. And since then, PlayStation 3 security has been garnering more than a little attention from enthusiasts and console monitors eager to get back inside the console. Well, yeah. So, with all that said, there's a, a PS jailbreak is what it's called. Um, it claims to be the world's first USB chipset mod for the PS3. Instead of having to crack the console, void the warranty, and modify internal components to bend the PS3 to, to their will... All users need to do is pop in the USB stick and then follow on-screen instructions. So, um, check it out, you know. They claim that it jailbreaks it. I haven't actually tried it because I don't have a PS3, but uh, still pretty neat stuff nonetheless. Webhosting.info has a story. Garm Technologies partners with Cloud Linux Inc., Cloud Linux Inc., a software company dedicated to serving the needs of hosting service providers, today announced that Garm Technologies, a hosting provider, will add Cloud Linux to its shared hosting infrastructure. 
The company says that Garm Technologies specialize in shared and VPS hosting and selected Cloud Linux for its new lightweight virtual environment technology that will deliver substantial performance improvements to its hosting customers. So pretty cool stuff. If you are a uh, Garm Technologies uh, customer, by all means, this is something to look forward to. From CMS Wire, Linux Foundation offers open source compliance checklist. It's great that open source offers flexibility and so much more. However, managing the licensing structure is confusing for many developers who incorporate or interact with open source code. Yeah, I know. I'm a developer. I can't tell you how many times. I mean, we've talked about this previously on the show. I can't tell you how many times some lazy programmer is trying to save some stuff, goes and adds an open source library to do, get the functionality he needs. And it's like, well, hang on a second here. This isn't being released as open source. You can't do that necessarily. It depends on, you know, how it's licensed. But, uh, you know, it, it happens. There's a lot of confusion. A lot of people think open source is free. It's not necessarily the case. Anyway, uh, the Linux Foundation has released a program to help you chart your way through sometimes choppy open source licensing waters. Uh, there's a checklist. There's an open compliance program. Check it out if you if you work a lot with open source code or if you're looking at maybe integrating some of it in to you know existing projects. This is definitely worth a look. From Hope News, the Linux Foundation welcomes Qualcomm. At the annual Linux conference, LinuxCon announced that the Qualcomm Innovation Center has joined as a platinum member. The Qualcomm Innovation Center focuses on open source software, Linux platform technology, and developer tools. The, ground, the group contributes a number of open source software tools and mobile technology, including the Linux kernel and WebKit. So pretty neat stuff. Uh, you know, more power to them. From Electronista, Ubuntu Linux get multi-touch in 10.10. .10. Now, I talked about this in the Geekinator uh, on the last episode of the Geekinator, uh, 03, season 3, episode 18. Um, I'm going to talk touch on it a little bit again uh, for those of you who are in my Linux audience, those of you who are on YouTube and blip.tv and you know, the various video sharing websites, you've probably already seen this, but um, I've got a pretty substantial Linux audience that downloads the show directly from my website, the Linux only show directly from my website. So I'm going to touch on this for their benefit. Canonical founder Mark Shuttleworth on Monday said via his blog that the first Ubuntu Linux build with support for multi-touch inputs will be out on October 10th. That's right. The software will be developed on the Dell XT2 tablet but by the launch date, it will work with other computers and peripherals, including Apple's Magic Trackpad. The development team has written what Shuttleworth calls a touch language, which allows for basic gestures to be chained or composed into sentences. So pretty neat stuff. Uh, Multi-touch is coming to Linux. Ubuntu's kind of forging the way here. Um, it'll, it'll be uh, very exciting to see uh, how it comes along. From the Inquirer, there's a, a story here. The Linux Foundation gets an SSD maker as a member. The open source army just got stronger with the addition of solid state storage systems maker Texas Memory Systems, which has joined the Linux Foundation. Texas Memory Systems will work with the Linux Foundation and the Linux kernel community to ensure its solid state disks are supported in the mainline kernel. Awesome stuff. That'll pretty much do it for this episode of Linux News Log. As always, I thank you for listening and watching. Uh, please subscribe to the show. You can visit us on the web, linux.quickshift.com. For those of you who are in, in uh, watching via YouTube and blip.tv and the other video sharing sites, please feel free to subscribe. And with that, I will see all of you on the next episode. Twitter.com slash Adrian underscore Bacon. See you then. Bye.